I'm just continuing my video series on zo the zombie sort of um, mini series that I was doing. Just just trying to get this zombie game uh, working. Now, my goal in these videos is not to create the most beautiful looking game, not to create the most uh, floor free game. It's but it's to try to get to teach the mechanics of game design to students. My goal is for a student to sort of understand the mechanics, to understand the coding. So the coding that I give makes sense from the point of view that it's simplistic, as simple as I can possibly get it. I'm trying to explain the actual mechanics of the coding and that's my goal. A lot of the other YouTubes you watch, they'll produce pretty games, they'll produce uh, graphics that uh, work and also more complicated code, but they'll be harder to understand and they're not teachers, they don't come from that angle. My angle is I come from there and that's one thing I want to get across um, at this stage, that you will learn Unity where you won't necessarily learn Unity from other sources. Um, so let's just show what we've got. The last thing that we were looking at, which is step six, was we had a zombie. It was walking towards us, and when he got close enough, it was taking health. And when our health went down, we died. Now, the only things that changed in this video from the last one is very simple things. I'll just show you briefly. Is I increased the reduce the attack speed to 0.75, increase the walk speed to three. Um, he just made it a bit more uh, reactive. The zombie. Another thought I had was that the uh, health here of the player is set to 100. Now, if I increase that to 200, and I also simultaneously go to the hood and increase that to 200, and I save it and save that one what you'll find is that what I was finding is you were dying too easy so I've just doubled effectively doubled the health as you see it goes down a bit slower and it sort of last you're a bit more robust as a player now and that's another change I've made that's another ch a ch a change I suggest you make this makes it a bit more playable and I've just spotted some of my hood. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap there and there. So I'm just going to quickly uh, increase the size of that top image. And I'm just going to briefly just reduce, just tidy that up a little bit. Um, uh, there's someone outside making a bit of a racket, which is quite annoying, but there you go. Increase the scale a little bit. There you go. Just a touch. So we'll go back to game. Yeah, it goes border to border. That's what I wanted. So the first thing we're going to, what we're going to talk about in this video, is I'm going to talk about uh, a weapon system, so that we can actually hurt this zombie. So this zombie is going to help, and we're going to engage in combat with it. So we need to add something to the hood first. So the first step is we're going to adjust the hood. So we're going to add some additional sort of um, things to the hood. What I want to add is some a bullet counter and a clip counter. So we've got a weapon system that's got bullets and clips. Also, we need some sort of like uh, reticule in the middle of the screen so we can actually target the zombie as well. That sort of nominates where the bullets are going to be fired from. I'm not going to put an actual physical gun yet. We might look at that in another video. But for now, I'm just literally just going to put... a. Uh, a little reticule in the middle of the screen but before we do that let's add add some text so i'm going to create in the ui i'm going to create a text i'm going to call it here i'm going to call it bullets and i'm going to give myself 50 bullets i'm going to scroll that up i'm going to put that on the screen underneath health there We'll rename that to bullets, and then I'm going to. I'm going to actually want to do is Control D, and I'll duplicate that. And then I've got this another one right here. I'll move it across there. I'll rename that to clips. 
I'm gonna call this here. Oops. Clips, and I want us to have five clips. Really simple. Now, obviously, I'm gonna have to have a look at that. It doesn't look very good in the hood right now, so let's just quickly adjust this. adjust it a little bit but it let's make the uh, best fit here yeah let's make it in the center in the center let's make it 20 point aerial a little bit better I'm going to do the same with that how did I get bullets I look at my bullets one I've got that metal there we go I had a space after that clips clips best fit that oh yeah that didn't work did it clips right okay so let's look at that in the game it's just gonna have to just, just try to ch line this up a little bit that's well, a bit better line it's not perfect now, just for sake of time, I'm not going to do any more than that. But uh, if you're doing your own, you'll obviously spend a lot more time on that. And I'll probably uh, edit this and change this for a future video. So I will tidy this up quite a bit later. But ro not right now. But anyway, you want to try to get that bullet looking a lot neater. And that clip's a lot neater than me. But the point is, you've got on your hood this. Now, there's one more thing we need to add to our, add to our hood. And that is the actual uh, reticule. So let me just give me two seconds just to find something there for that. Give me one moment. I'm just navigating for the actual image for that. There's loads of ways you can do this. Um, All right, well, let's have a look. So I'm gonna, here to HUD, I'm going to create the UI. I want to create another image here. Now it's obviously going to appear in the center of the screen, but this here, source image, I'm going to click here. We'll find something that's appropriate. And now you've got a selection. This is the ones that with all the code I've got. Now, none of these are really any good but i think the one that you'll have in default is this little knob now i might find another one later let's have a look how big that is that's huge we're going to make that scale a lot smaller let's make it 0.25 the scale of 0.25 by 0.25 we don't need to bother with the z because that's the the other setting so looking game it's quite a big still a big white blob i just want a little red spot really that's what I'm after. A little red spot to be perfect. So let's make it point, uh, point one by point, not point one. Oops. No, not point not one. Not point, point one. There we go. Click on it. Hood. Look at game. That's a little dot. That'll do. And I want to make it red. So let's have a look at the image. I want to put rename that to reticule indicating that's what we're going to fire through uh, I'm going to make that as a little red spot game yeah I've got a little red spot that's what I want that will do so our first thing is I've done on my hood just to recap is I've created a uh, bullets and a clip and a reticule we're going to need them for our code now so let's start with the hood script shall we 
I'm going to show you what we're going to add. So we've got serialized field there image. We're going to have to serialize these two as well. So we're going to have two more serialization thingies. So I'm literally going to show you what they are. I'm going to copy and paste from a previous bit of code and I'm going to talk about them. So here we are. So I'm serializing the text. So these are texts. They're not images, these two things. One is the bullets left and one is clips left. It shows you how many clips. So they're both serialized. And if I go here, oops, oops, wrong button. I'm going to just quickly save that. And then if I go back to my HUD, it should just literally pop up in a second. You'll see it pop there. Can you see? Bullets left clip. I'm just literally going to link bullets to there. I'm just going to do it now. Oops, clips. Back to HUD clips so we're linking the bullets and the clips because we're going to change that's going to show how many bullets left that's how many clips left so that's the first bit the next thing we're going to do is we want to um, update the clips and the bullets so we've got a public here of show health we're going to create two more functions two more public functions to show the bullets and the clips so it's really simple public void these are going to get called, called by the uh, player controller script and they're going to reduce the bullets and the clips. So it's going to be bullets left, bullets left, oops, public void. Oh, hang on, we're we giving it a name here, public void. What am I going to call it? Show bullets. I'm sorry, I was confused then. Show bullets and I'm going to have another function, public void. Guess what? It's going to be called show clips. And this is just literally just going to show what the clips are and what the bullets are. Really simple. And I've put public, it should be public here. And obviously, we're going to update the actual bullets left. So it's going to be using bullets left. I want to copy and paste them up here. Dot. And it's going to be, what is it? It's a text, isn't it? And it's going to be equal to bullets left. Well, it's going to be the word bullets first, because if you look what we've actually typed in, we need to write the word bullets in again. Bullets, I'm going to write, put a call on there. And it's going to be plus. Now, it needs to take in what the actual bullets in. So here, public void bullets, we're actually going to take in an integer. And we're going to call it bullets. So that when this function is called, we're going to pass in how many bullets and it's going to get displayed there, bullets. But bullets is an integer, so we're going to convert it to a string and we do that by using the to string command, which is actually just highlighted there. That converts an integer to a string to get displayed on the actual thing. And this is exactly the same here, This is, but this is going to be clips left. Clips left dot text because it's a text it actually unity writes it for you really and it's going to be the, the thing i put in was clips space colon and it's going to be plus and this is going to once again take in an integer called clips and it's going to be clips dot exactly same to string Sometimes you get the helper come up, sometimes you don't. What I mean by the helper is it tells you what it is. Clips. That's why that didn't work, because I didn't spell clips right. So there is the HUD script. We've created two new functions, and we've created two new serialized fields to act so that it links with it all. Clear any of that. Just make sure that you get no errors here so there we are we've got our clips we've got our hood done so that's the hood that's the easy bit now we've got two of the scripts to modify the player controller and the zombie so let's do the hard one the player controller now let's open this one up now we are going to be firing bullets from here so we need some sort of um 
well, there's, there's lots of things that's going to take place. We're firing bullets. We need to, first of all, show where the, billet, the bullets are going to land. And we're going to have what's known as a hit marker. I'm going to come back to that later, this hit marker concept. Um, but one of the things we need to do, and it's going to be an actual object, it's actually going to be an asset. Um, and the way I've done it in my game is I've got what's known as a prefab. And that prefab... I'm going to actually show you in a second, but I'm just going to first of all find it. So give me one to find me this prefab. Prefabs, uh, I'll show you what a prefab is. Hold on, I'm going to create a folder here called prefabs. Be a good idea. Let's do that first. And prefabs, prefabs are just basically backups of things that you have. So a prefab, I want the I want a prefab of a player. So I'm going to grab the player, put it in prefabs. And can you see it's it's just a backup of the player it's actually what it looks like we can use this again and again i'm going to do one of the zombie so if you want multiple zombies you put them as prefabs and you drag them from prefabs up to the screen and anything that happens with the with the prefab you change one it changes all of them which is the beauty of prefabs but we're going to add another prefab uh just give me a moment to find my little video well, not my video my code Give me two seconds. I'm just accessing another version here, prefabs. Right, here we go. Let's open this up here. So let's grab this across here. So this is a prefab. I'm going to give you a copy of this later. As you can see, it's just particle systems here. And what it looks like is it looks like a little bit of sparkle. So you can see on the screen sparkles where you hit. So it actually helps you when it gives you some feedback as the player where you're shooting. We're going to use this prefab. I'm going to cut, give it a tab of prefab as well. Hit marker, sorry. It's prefab. We're going to call this hit marker. We're going to call it hit marker. Hit marker. Save. So it's called hit mark i try to tag everything what it is on screen one of the things that make games work better is you call the tag the same as the thing because we're going to be using that a lot the hood's the hood and one of the important ones to get right it may not be obvious is camera make sure you look camera's untagged there that means to make sure that's camera if you don't you get lots of null exceptions okay so anyway we've got our prefab called hit marker ready I'll give you a copy of that later, but let's get back to the script. So we've got our, we need to access this um, this hit marker because we're firing bullets. We want to show where the bullets land. So we're going to create another serialized field. Do you notice I use a lot of these serialized fields because I think they're really good. And it's going to be, oops, I didn't want to do that. Go there. I'm going to create a private game object. So I'm going to go private. It's going to be game object, and I'm going to call it what it is. It's going to be hit marker, but I'm going to do this different spelling to what it's actually called. Hit M. I'm going to call it hit M, and it's going to be the hit marker. Now it won't necessarily find it here. I'm going to rename that. Sorry, I confused myself there. We're calling it hit M because we're actually calling that. It's going to be linked to this this game object. We're going to link in here. And the game the game object is going to be hit marker. We'll drag and drop it up there. Let's save it. So, what else do we need? So that's this is going to be the bullets shows bullets where they land. I'm going to actually put in shows where bullets land. This is called commenting what I'm doing here and it shows just basically helps somebody reading your code to see what, what's happening. Alright, so now the other thing we need to do is one thing that I'm going to add to this, I'm going to show you this, is, is this thing called uh, you notice when you're playing your game in screen you get your cursor over it. So let's hide our cursor, shall we? So let's look at cursor dot visible and we're going to equal false 
So in other words, oops, false. What this does is it turns your cursor off. So while you're in, in this window here in game mode, you won't have your mouse cursor in or be hidden. Which I think just makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to have this line in. I just think it's just useful. So this hides cursor in game. In other words, while you're playing. Very useful. Now, let's have a look at your clips. Now, we're going to be firing bullets here. And we're going to be firing things. So we need to set our bullets up. So that's a health section. So I'm going to add up a new section here called player weapons. So we're going to have privates. We're going to have some ints. And we're going to have a clips. Equal five. Well, we've, we're having five clips because that's what I wrote in my text before. And private, we need to know how many bullets we have per, per clip now. And it's, I've already defined it as 50. So bullets, bullets per clip equals 50. Actually, I'm going to rename this as current. I'm going to rename this to current bullets. Oh no, I'm going to actually, no, sorry. I'm going to call it bullets per clip. So it's always 50. And the thing we want to put here is we want to put another one is we want to reload our weapon. So I'm going to have a bo private boolean for this. I'm going to call it is loading equals false so that's when we're reloading our gun we want a little delay to take place in between reloading so it's not like you just have loads and loads of bullets you have to it takes time to change clips of a gun so i've got things here this is the player weapon stuff i've added these things here and another one we need to add is we said how many bullets per clip but we need to keep an eye on our current bullet level so it's private int current bullet so we've we've as we fire and this will go down i'm not going to define that at the moment because what we're going to start here is we're going to say current bullets equals bullets per clip So we're saying you're starting off with your 50 bullets here. That sets it right at the beginning. And obviously this is going to keep going down, but that's going to be a fixed number, that bullets uh, bullets per clip. All right, so that's the first bit. That's the easy bit to explain. So we've got that side of things doing. Um, we're going to be adding things to the updates. We're going to be adding some more functions. But what we want to do right down here is we're going to add some new functions. These functions are to do with the weapon systems. So I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call it void. All functions start with void unless they're, unless they're shared by other other bits of uh, other code from other parts of the game. You put public. But when they're just internal like this is, they just use the word void. I'm going to call it use of weapons. So this is all to do with the weapons. This is my weapon systems routine. It makes it helpful to just know what it is. So use of weapons. I'm saving it there. And I'm going to put in here. There's an update function. I want to call it here. Use of weapons. Because I'm going to use it. It's going to get access from the update. So I'm doing this now. Even though there's use of weapons. There's got nothing in it. I put a place marker in there. So let's talk about use of weapons. First thing we're going to do in use of weapons is we've got have we got access to our HUD here. Yes, we've got access to our HUD. So we need to update our weapons. So use of weapons, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go HUD. I mean, is it lowercase or uppercase? I can never remember. Ooh, where is HUD? There's HUD, lowercase HUD. HUD. So we want to update our weapons and our um, it's going to be show bullets because that that 
is a routine I've defined in the hood and I've saved it so that's why I can access it there and how many bullets are we going to buy well, it's going to be obviously the current bullets isn't it so it's going to show on the hood the current bullets and also it's going to show we also want to show our clip size don't we show clips so we're going to have here it's expecting us to do that we're going to do clip size I can't remember where I called it now What did I call it? I honestly can't remember. Scroll up to the top. Clips. Oh, very simple, really. Clips. So there, that was the easy bit. So here it nicks with the hood and shows what our current bullets and our clips are. We've not fired a weapon yet. So another thing is we want to check to see if we're reloading. If we're reloading, we are not shooting. So if now I've created a function up here called is loading is loading so if we if we are loading then we can't shoot so what how do we do that we go if reloading is false right so in other words if we're loading it's this thing but we also want to check to see if we're firing a button so what i do is i check so with the mouse button so i've got input dot now we're going to check get mouse button get mouse button and we're going to check for the actual um second I've got confused there so if input mouse button get mouse button input oh hang on I'm getting confused here get mouse button zero so provided we're not reloading we can use our mouse button and we can fire so we're going to do some sort of uh, shoot here so we're going to have another function called shoot, which I'm going to put here, void. It's always a good idea to create the function before you call it shoot. So here's where we're going to do our shooting. So then I'm going to call the function shoot. But we also want to reduce our ammo count, don't we? Which is where it gets interesting, because what we need to do um, we can actually check our ammo. We can actually reduce our ammo here or here. I've got a choice. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my ammo reducing in the shoot function. So I don't. All I do is call the shoot function here. But basically, so what we're doing here, I'm just replete, re just going through it. Is we're checking to see if we're reloading. If we're reloading, is true. Then it doesn't matter if we press the mouse or not, we won't be able to shoot. But if we're not reloading and we press the mouse, we can shoot. We also want to do a reload as well. So, if, I'm going to do the first bit of this bit here. If it's, if it's false and we're doing a, we want to check to see, get key down. So what we're doing here is we're checking to see if we're pressing the reload button and I've defined the reload button as key code dot R so in other words if we press the R button that is just to say reload and then we're going to do a routine to reload so I'm creating a little function called reload but I'm doing a special one it's called a coroutine and the coroutine is one that pauses so what I'm going to do here, this is the new bit of function, it's called starting coroutine, start, and it's actually there, coroutine. So that means it's one of these routines that you can do, when, it, when it's called, it goes away for so many seconds and doesn't return to its finished. 
When you call in other functions, they return immediately and there's no pause. This one allows you to do a pause. So we need a function in here. I'm going to call the function reload. So it's going to start a call re routine called reload. And we're going to set is reloading, is loading, sorry, equal to true. So you, until that returns, actually, I'm going to do it the other way around because when it returns from there, is loading equals. I'll explain what's happening in a second. It's, this is a bit hard to explain, but I'm going to do my best. Is loading up, uh, equals save it here. I bet I'm just, I'm just going to just create. The actual code, and then I'm going to explain what's happening here. Reload. So we've got a code routine called. We're going to start a re reload we, now. So we're going to create a function called reload. We don't call it reload. We call. I knew it's called. I want to actually copy and paste it, and then I'll explain it. No, I won't. All right, I'll type it in. Change my mind because this is different from what I've written anyway. I enumerator. Layer reload. Is it load? Yeah, it's simple case reload. So it's a special function we're going. And what this function is going to do first thing we need to do if we do this business code, it's called a yield. Now, this is the what this yield does is that is effectively it will wait to return from this function so once it's called this call routine it, it, it stays in it it's like doing a pause for so many seconds so we're going to do a, a, a pause return return new wait this is where we put the wait for fixed for seconds wait for seconds there we go wait for seconds I'm going to wait 1.5 seconds so it takes 1.5 seconds to reload a clip so it's like you for 1.5 seconds you are basically open to attack you can't fire you can't do anything now this is where we reduce our clips we want to say if the clips is it capital P yes clip oh it's lowercase clips clips is greater than zero then clips minus minus so we're reducing our clips and we're also setting our current ammo current is it current current bullets equals uh, I can't remember what I called it this is where you gotta remember what you call things scroll up here bullets per clips bullets per clips I I need that one so now I've reloaded it, so I've set my max clips back again. And then here I want to do, I've got to set myself my loading business again, or is loading. I want to set it equal to false. So that means we're not loading now. So for one and a half seconds, loading is set to true. This loading is set to true. Uh, you won't be able to fire and you won't be able to reload. So one and a half seconds, this is oh true. And I, I could write this in a better way. But I'm just going to leave it as it is now because it's the way I've written it. But there are other ways of writing exactly the same code that may be better or better. It's all subjective. So this allows me to reload. created a function called now this function here is where it's going to get really complicated the shoot routine Ooh, now this is where it's going to get quite complicated to explain but I'll do my very best right I'm going to just basically just sort of move this to one side a little bit and explain here is our screen what we want to do is we have a player I'm going to go to the scene here I'm going to click on the player now the camera is the key bit for this so the camera can you see you've got this little box here the camera has got um 
it's looking out here and if I look through there you're looking out through the camera which I'm showing you through here and the center of the camera is there and what we do is we're going to do what's known as rays we're going to be looking through our camera and we're going to be doing ray what's known as ray casting and rays and we're going to be looking forward and checking out the screen in front of the player in front of the camera technically but the camera is attached to the player so that's why i keep using the word word name uh, player but we're looking through this camera this camera object here which is why quite important where, where we know where the camera is and the camera just happens to be in front of the player which is fairly handy um but we check in for the center of the screen here so i'm going to go back to my code here so what we need to do is we're going to shoot and we're going to do what's known as some ray casting to the camera on the center of the screen and we're going to be checking to see what is hit when we th cast these invisible rays from the camera forward when you press the button it fires out this invisible ray and see if it touches the zombie or whatever whatever it touches is where we're going to have these hit markers and if it happens to touch the zombie then we're going to the zombie is going to take some sort of damage which we're going to do shortly so the first thing we're going to do is when we shoot is we're going to reduce the current bullets we fired a bullet we fired so we reduce this bullet we could do that equally up there but i've done it here so we're reducing bullets <coughs> excuse me now this is the ray business now i'm going to copy and paste it and explain it because it's quicker so here we go so here we are we are firing a ray and it's to the if you look here it's looking through to the camera so we're looking in the camera and we're looking if you look the width divided by two and the height looking by two so we're looking in the center of the camera view we fire an array to the center of the screen and then we're trying to find out what it hits here is what it's going to show what is being found now that hit info i think i might need to define it give me a second defined there it's a local variable so it doesn't matter too much so all right then so now we've just said so we fire this ray and we're going to be testing to see where it hits so we're going if this is we use the physics engine here so we'll go physics physics dot raycast oops physics dot raycast and we're going to look at what's known as the ray origin and we're going to comma out and it's going to be the hit info which is what we define up there it's very hard to explain but it sort of writes itself as you start typing it in which is what i tend to find which is how you know it's on the right path so we've got an if so in other words what this is saying is if we've hit something then do this if not then obviously you're not so if, if we hit something because you're going to fire sometimes and it might just go nowhere but if it hits something we need to find out what it hits because if it hits the zombie we're going to do something about it if it hits the ground we want to show like bullet markers hit markers when it's hit so what i do is the first one let's do a debug let me see what what we've hit in the debug we can actually say please show me what you've hit debug log what have i hit what hit what equals so hit what plus hit info so this will actually put a debug of what i've actually hit but that hit info there is not actually giving me a name it's just giving me something thing so what we have to do is do hit, hit transform dot name i could actually put tag but i put name so it's just seen showing me what i've hit so it said hit ground zombie whatever it is i've hit will get displayed right now 
actually going to this will not work yet but I'm going to just show you what this does press play now we've got errors get key down does not work in I'm just going to figure this out here get key down does not work in current context Right, so first error message. So I may just pause the video while I try to figure this out and then get back to about this. So let me just hang on a second. Right, so it's fairly easy. What I'll do there is this is the word input. See, sometimes it's really quite simple what you do wrong. 90% it is. Let's see if see what it does there. Something here cannot convert to type string it says. So Once again, I'll just pause 